Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Chesney's back, so that can mean one thing, Mr. Baker. One, one thing. thing. <laughs> yes, we're at Miami's 11, uh, well, it's not Miami's 11 for on the West Ham Network. Hope you're safe and well. Um, today, we have got a, a very, very special guest. <laughs> he's one of my 11, he's one of your 11 as well, Anton, and, set, and a lot of people in a certain, in, in a generation, is in their My Hammers 11. Um, and uh, we've been very fortunate enough, I think, I think this person is my fifth of my hammers 11 i've had in the channel of my own personal one so a, a, a player that also made a massive impact at west ham as well huge huge, huge impact. impact huge impact and uh we'll, we'll uh we'll do a little intro then we'll bring him in Dean Ashton, <laughs> <laughs> a rose in between two thorns. How are we doing, Dino? Great, yeah. Thanks for that intro. Very nice. Nineteen yeah. goals. That seems poor, though, doesn't it? Nineteen. Yeah, but they were all oh, worldies, no. mate. They were twenty. <laughs> you know, can probably remember every single one of them. Yeah, I can. That is true. That is true. They were all <laughs> quite. Yeah, they were all quite. I mean, I mean, there was there was there was that one. That was quite a good goal. Um, that was all right. That was all right. That was all right. We could call it, we could call it twenty. We've obviously the uh, the when you did it against Mark, Mark Noble's testimonial as well. So we can round it up. We can round it up. Uh, how are we, Dean? Are we well? Really good, thanks. Yeah, yeah, really good. Um, obviously, you know, working in the media at the moment, so getting to plenty of West Ham games actually, which is uh, which is always nice. Excellent. And obviously, on that note, obviously you're seeing a lot of West Ham at the moment. Um, what do you? What's your synopsis of the season so far? Um, I would say it felt like there was definitely a change at the start of the season to try and maybe get away from being as defensive as we have been in the in the previous two seasons. But I think that was then to the detriment of the defensive side. You know, we've conceded a ridiculous amount of shots. The amount of saves the goalkeepers are having to make is is up there alongside the, the teams right at the bottom. Um, and they've struggled in, in that sense. But then... I think the games I've seen, and, and it's and it feels like it's very much a David Moyes way, which is you'll get ten to twenty minutes in every game where you go, "Wow, we look we look fantastic for those ten to 50, ten to twenty minutes where we, we'll probably score, we'll look really strong, we'll create chances." And in those in those twenty minutes, I've really enjoyed what I've seen from the from the forward players. But then, obviously, a lot of the game is sitting back and, and looking to counter attack, which at times can be can be a tough watch. Yeah. Dean, and obviously... can, I, can, I, can I ask you on the back of that then, when you watch the, the difference between, say, West Ham and other teams just now, if you're playing in this current team, Dean, and you're getting an opportunity after opportunity to score goals, do you, as a player, look at the way that West Ham play for the full 90 minutes, or do you think of it's a results game and right now West Ham are seventh, we're in the quarterfinals of the Europa League, We've just won something last year. Like, what, what, what is it that, the, in your opinion, the player from your experience would would go through with that? I'd hate it as a player. I would is because it? I would I wouldn't be involved very much. Yeah. I would rely on sporadic breaks. I think as the as the the forward player, you've got to be really patient and wait for those tiny opportunities. You've got to work hard on your own which was something I, I didn't particularly enjoy and didn't really thrive upon, which is why I think I, I didn't play as much under Kirbishly as I, as I wanted to, because he wanted to play that lone striker role and it's a very difficult role to play. Um, so I, I wouldn't have enjoyed it, but the results are there. You can't, you can't hide the fact that we qualified for Europe. We've won a European trophy. We're up there at the, the top half of the table, pushing for European places. Once again, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't hide those facts. They're there. But so, so, but the fact that there's so many, there's, there's such a split in terms of um, the fan base is because when you go week in, week out, you, you do watch the opposition have probably 60, 
to 65% of the possession for most of the game. So, so that, isn't easy, that isn't easy to watch. It's not easy to probably play in as a forward. But we've got but such we've got good forward good. players. When we get it right, we, we look fantastic. Yeah, yeah, totally. And obviously, on that basis, we we play we play Newcastle at the end of this international break. Um, I think, as as West Ham fans, we've we've never liked the international break since since you were involved. In all honesty, I hate the internationals. <laughs> um, but Newcastle, massive game, obviously, for this fight for European places. Newcastle themselves, they've got obviously a lot of injuries. How do you think we'll get on again? Uh, yeah, St James's Park Saturday, twelve thirty kickoff. I mean, how do you think we're going to get on against them? I think both teams are in a similar position in terms of they're really pushing for a bit of consistency and um, and and looking to sort of keep pushing. Um, I'm actually up there as well for the game for radio, so I am I'm looking forward to it because the atmosphere is always pretty special up there. Um, but I think this is again the type of game that David Moyes won't be fearful of. He knows he can go there sit back, defend, soak up the pressure from Newcastle who are missing some of their forward players. They're maybe not as sharp as, as they have been at the top end of the pitch and know that as long as everybody's fit and comes through, that now he's got kind of a full complement to choose from um, in terms of that forward line. I would expect Antonio to start again, who's actually looked, I think, pretty good in the last two games and frees up the other players. So I expect it to be... Probably an attempt at a smash and grab. <laughs> Dean, on, 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 on Antonio then, you know, I, I'm intrigued to hear what your kind of thoughts are on Antonio um, as, a, as a kind of, you know, not a natural born striker, but has grown into the role over the years and still now, years later in West Ham shirt, West Ham rely heavily on him um, leading the line again. You know, what's your kind of thoughts on, on Antonio? Um, I got a huge amount of respect for him because of the way he plays that role. And I know how difficult that role is. And he's unapologetic in the way that he plays it in terms of the work that he's willing to put in, in wide areas, which I'd want absolutely nothing to do with because I'd want to be in the box and I'd want to be in and around where it matters. And I think he's willing to do all that other stuff that other players don't want to do or, or can't do it as well as he can and occupy two, two centre-backs. Um, is he technically the best player? No. But he's worked on it. He's, he's tried to improve. Is he going to score multiple goals? Is he going to get you off your, your seat and maybe score something spectacular? Probably not. But I tell you what, he's he plays that role so well. And I bet if you asked all the other players um, if they wanted him in the side, they would they would say yes, especially the other forward players, because he does all that other unselfish work for other players to kind of get the glory, I think. So he's, he's an important player, but it's amazing how many other players have come in and he's embarrassed them because mm. his work rate levels, the others can't get to, the Skamakas um, of, 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 who have come in, those type of players, Halaire even came in and he embarrassed them because yeah. the work he put in, they weren't able to match it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and if I'm led to believe that, you know, you, you're putting the boots back on soon or in, in May for the uh, DT38 um, charity match. Is that right? Is Dino coming yes. back on? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's an amazing cause, of, of course. Um, yeah. And when Jimmy Walker gives you the yeah. nod, it's very, very <laughs> difficult. Very difficult to refuse, Jimmy. Um, yes. So yeah, I, I I will be. I don't do it very often. I've got to admit, it's it's. I've probably played five times since I've retired. Yeah. I think. Um, so it is it is pretty rare that I'll that I'll come out. But I'll I'll. I said to Jimmy, I said I can't run. Yeah. And he said it. He said he said same as always. So I was like, but. <laughs> <laughs> did he mention he saved the penalty against Frank Lampard? I don't know if he did. Apparently he did. Oh, Apparently he did. I don't know. But Apparently yeah. he dined out on it for about oh, a whole career. <laughs> Has not bought a drink in Essex since. Um, no. I guarantee. Right. Let's let's talk about let's talk about the the old days. Um, we, we've done we've done the new stuff. Um, obviously, as we said, signed record signing at the time seven million pounds from Norwich. I remember it very well. I remember <laughs> being, you being a. Uh, welcomed onto the pitch um and uh, i was i was very excited when you was when you was joined how did that how did that how did that happen because it was sort of relatively out of the blue really in terms of the transfer in terms of the fans knowing about it 
Yeah, it was pretty out of the blue for me. I think I only knew um, a day or so before I actually before wow. I actually signed of, of the interest. Um, we, Norwich actually played West Ham in the cup um, a couple of days before, and I didn't play. Which, no matter what I say, everyone thinks that I just threw one in, <laughs> which I didn't. Um, but then I got a call to to say to go down and see. Um, the West Ham manager because they'd accepted an offer. So I went down to to a hotel near Dartford and met Alan Pardew, who, if you haven't if you haven't met him, is this is a pretty confident bloke. Obviously, cho- <laughs> chocolate is chocolate is his nickname, of course, because he would eat himself. Um, and the presentation he put on for me was just amazing. This PowerPoint presentation on how the team is set up how it's going to work for me in terms of uh, having a, a strike partner and what they can do for me, what Harewood it was at the time. You know, wingers such as Yossi Benayoun and Etherington to to sort of deliver quality from, from the wide areas um, and, and a mentor in Teddy Sheringham. So, I mean, I, I came well, out of that meet I came out of that meeting feeling like Diego Maradona. So I was never... <laughs> I was I was never not going to sign after meeting after meeting Pars, but the one thing I think I wasn't ready for was the size of the fan base. I I, had, I, I was probably very naive actually to how big the support is for, for West Ham as a as a football club, and that was the that was the one thing that really caught me off guard. And I think I came to the game and was was unveiled on the pitch against Fulham at home, where Anton scored that ridiculous volley and. Yeah. Yossi scored that chip and I was thinking yeah. and the atmosphere was brilliant as well because it was like I think it was Repka's last game and yeah. I was I was like wow I, d- I didn't quite realise you, you look a bit uh, like a, a, a rabbit in headlights in that photo <laughs> a bit like, oh, what, the, what the fuck have I done <laughs> but there's a lot Dean there's a lot of people that don't really recognise West Ham as the sizables especially with the fan base and it probably takes for the opportunity for us to win something like we did and, and, and all the fans who travelled to Prague, but all the fans that turned up in East London for that parade. I mean, you know, I, I was there, it was, it was it was absolutely phenomenal. And even I think some of the players in the current team were saying the same. They did not realise the enormity of, of what West Ham is. So it's really interesting to hear your kind of point of view on that and, and how that's come about, you know? Yeah, yeah, well, I think... There obviously is a huge history to the football club and the big link with with um, with 1966, which probably brought along a whole new fan base, and then generations later, that's grown. Um, it, it was the one thing that I didn't realise that literally anywhere in the world that I went, somebody would come up to me yeah. who was a West Ham fan, and I'm talking <laughs> any, I'm talking anywhere. It was just, it was bonkers. Love it. Yeah. Well, it's true. We are massive everywhere we go. Yeah. The, the, the song, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's factually true. And obviously, um, you know, you signed, you made your debut away to Arsenal, and then obviously your home debut gets Sunderland, and you went on a bit of a run. I think you scored like five or about five goals in about six games in the cup as well. So it was a great, you know, a great way to sort of get into the get into West Ham. And obviously that that first game, Sunderland at home, scoring on your debut, it's a dream start, isn't it, for home debut? Yeah, yeah, it is. I think it's so important as well for a, for a striker. If you can get off to a, a good start, it means hopefully the supporters think, actually, yeah, we've spent our money wisely. I think you integrate yourself with the players, which wasn't hard because it was such an amazing group, a real sort of, um, you know, homegrown um homegrown group in terms of the English-based players, the Welsh, Scottish, etc. Um and I felt comfortable pretty much straight away. And, and I think moving in January as well does help a player. So you're, you're fit, you're yeah. doing well, hence why you've been bought. So you can just roll in with the confidence that you've, that you've got. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I, how I felt. And I think it, it really worked for me anyway. Definitely. And obviously that, uh, that season, um, obviously we got to the, FA Cup final. Um, first time we'd done that since 1980. Um, you must have thought, Christ, this is fucking easy, isn't it? I joined West Ham. <laughs> FA Cup I scored as well in the FA Cup final. Um, I mean, we've had lots of, we've had Conch and, and Matty Effrington and, and and Jimmy's still pissed off with pards that he picked Shaka Hislop instead of himself. Um, but 
what was that like? An FA Cup, that's a boyhood dream, surely, to be playing in the FA Cup final and scoring. Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, that wasn't something that Pards promised. <laughs> was, um, was an FA Cup. It was probably the only thing he didn't promise. But, um, uh, I mean, that image alone there me, of me celebrating um, is, is probably the only actual picture that I have up in my house. Because oh, that, yeah. that is just genuine emotion you know as forwards tend to practice <laughs> how we're going to celebrate uh because we're arrogant like that but we, <laughs> i um that was actually gen just genuine because the fa cup final to me was the biggest final um growing up as a kid it wasn't the it european was. cup it was it was the fa cup final so to to get there and experience that was was very very special i mean the semi-final at, at villa park is that like oh. iconic isn't it to play your semi-final there the fans afterwards was just i mean the game wasn't great but it was you've just got to win it and, and that those celebrations were were amazing and something i'll always remember and then i then i then tweaked my hamstring though about three weeks before away at west brom and thought maybe my my chance was gone um, but i did i did everything i could to be fit i mean i was blooming i was in oxygen chambers and God, acupuncture, acu everything you could think of to try and get fit and, and manage to get fit on the Wednesday, I think, before the Saturday. Wow. Um, wow. And, and yeah, and so when we went down to Cardiff, plush hotel, um, night before, Pards sort of announces the team um, and sort of flip, flips back the chart and, and there's the team, Shaka in goal, Scaloni at right back, Conch at left back, Gabs and Anton, you had Fletch, Fletch and Nige in the middle, Mm -hmm. uh, ben Ayun on the right and Netherington up top, Marlon Harewood, and then a question mark because he couldn't decide between me and Bobby because Bobby had come in and done really well. Um, he obviously beat Tottenham in that last day of the season and, and he played really well in that as well and just said he needed to sleep on it for the night. So thanks very much, Gaffer. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, everyone, else, you, everyone else kind of knew where they stood in terms of um, how they could prepare, whether they were starting on the bench or not, even in the squad, whereas me and Bobby didn't have a, didn't have a clue. Oh, <laughs> nothing. Not, oh, said, 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 said nothing at breakfast, said nothing when we were doing the soups, nothing when we first got to the ground. But eventually, obviously, for me to hear that, for me to hear that I was starting in, in the biggest showpiece final, I thought there, there was uh, for West Ham against you know Liverpool as well yeah. Yeah. was 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 just was just incredible. So yeah, very very proud to to be able to play a part in a in an FA Cup final. Yeah. Dean, on the lead up to that, obviously FA Cup final, there was at what point did you as a player think, oh God, we're we're a shoe in to get to this final? I mean, even the Man City game, for example, your pivotal <laughs> reason, the great goals um, at, at, at the City of Manchester Stadium. I was in the crowd. The, the, the fans were. Absolutely unreal that night. I think it was, you know, it, was it that point that you thought, oh, God, we stand a real chance here? No, I, I was kind of still just running with it. It's all new for me and wanting to impress and do something, you know, to integrate myself and, and that side of it. And, and so that night was pretty special for me personally to be able to score the first goal, which was one of my favourites. And then to tap in the second, um, felt like I, because you, you want to feel like you're having a real influence on this cup run because at that point, at that point, I hadn't. You know, the, the rest of the team had done it up to that point. So to to have a big part to play felt felt pretty special. But we we still knew that Chelsea and Liverpool were had gone through. So really, it was after as soon as the draw was made and we celebrated the fact that we got Middlesbrough. Um, that's when we thought, yeah, then if it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be this year and. Um, and, and we couldn't have been any closer, I don't think. No, nah, no. Nah. And, and obviously, we had, the, we had the frustration, obviously, playing, you know, quite unusual playing Liverpool a couple of weeks, you know, a week or so before in the cup, in the in the league rather. And obviously, you know, Hayden, I think that was a that was a massive loss to us. You know, I think Louis Garcia got sent off for Liverpool in that match. But I think Hayden was so critical to us that season that really, you know, as I said, Fletch came in, um, you know, and obviously a great player, but wasn't, wasn't wasn't Mullins to be honest. Um, that must have been unusual, sort of playing Liverpool just before playing in the in the final as well. It's a strange, it was a strange sort of occurrence. And then obviously for it to all kick off as well with that sort of fight, it's just a really really strange strange game. Obviously you didn't play that game. Um, was it because you had your was your hamstring yeah. tweaked then? 
makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it was. It, I just, I was so gutted for Hayden. You know, he's such a, a, a top guy. Everyone absolutely loved him. The sort of unsung hero. Um, I felt so sorry for him that that he he wasn't able to play. I think he was he was definitely going to be more of a miss. I think Luis Garcia would be for for Liverpool. But at the same time, we knew Fletch actually is a was a very good player in his own right and would do and would do the job that was really important, which was to sit there and let Nige go and play. But I just I think that final for me summed up what Alan Pardew is all about, which was. We didn't talk that much about Liverpool. We, you know, of course we did. We respected them, and we, 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 you know, watch videos, etc. But so much of it was about us. So much of it was about how they're going to have to cope with us, and how we're going to attack, attack them. Maybe eventually to our detriment. But I think it made it the final. It was because of the way. You know, most teams would have maybe played a back three, would have sat in, just frustrated Liverpool counter attack. We didn't. We. We played four four two and an attacking four four two against yeah. against the current European champions. You know that that takes some doing. So, and I'm so glad we did because it was oh yeah, it was incredibly enjoyable up until the last few oh. minutes. But um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, up until that up, up until that point, it it was it was an incredible game from us considering the opponents. Yeah, it I was, mean, I'm thinking, you know, as a fan, let alone being a player. You know, <laughs> in the moment, I'm sitting beside my dad. The reason I'm a West Ham fan, historically watched us win everything um, in person. For him to turn around to me and say, son, I never thought I'd see us win an FA Cup final again, just as Gerard steps up. And, I mean, what, what's going through your, your, your head at that moment, Dean? I don't want to, you know, but it, it's such it's an achievement. Yes, no, I know, and I don't want to bring up that kind of... <laughs> But it's such an achievement for us as West Ham fans and for you to be a pivotal part for creating some of the best memories I've ever had in my lifetime. But what's what's it like for you as a player playing in that in that game at that moment? I mean, it, it's but it's your dream, you know. And and I've always I've always watched finals, and I love watching finals where there's teams that are winning something for the first time because of the emotion you see from the players. Because you you dream of lifting the silverware, you dream of. of you know, as you walk past, kissing the trophy, getting to lift it, getting to walk around, you, all of that that comes with it and the pride of we've done it, you know, and you can you can put that aside and go, like really behind me, it shouldn't just be the shirt and boots, it should be a, a replica of the of the yeah. trophy type of thing, you know, because then you can look back and go, we we actually achieved it and we, 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 were, we were there. I mean, obviously I frustratingly got taken off after 70 minutes or something like that, which I wasn't happy about, but I thought we we were going to see the game out. So I was sat there on the bench. I think I put my tracksuit top on. And it didn't look like they were going to score. It's not like they were peppering the goal. Yep. They had cramp. They they didn't really look like... It looked like we were just going to comfortably see it out. So then for that to happen, you know... Because it was right when the announcer announced the, the added time. Yeah. It, about two seconds later, Gerard hit it in. And sometimes, look, because I'm a player, I can recognise how unbelievable that goal is. And sometimes yeah. you've just got to, you've got to recognise somebody who's a bit of a freak and, and is capable of something like that in that moment and appreciate that that can happen. And it's just unfortunate it happened to us. Yep. 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 It did. It did. And then obviously, you know, there was, then we're going into sort of the, the end of Pardew, um, and as you mentioned about Curbs, and obviously you know your is the the way Curbs played football um, meant that it was going to be less opportunity. You obviously, by the sounds of it, enjoyed playing football a lot more under Pards than you did under Curbs, um, and I think there's a lot of parallels really between the way people see the way Moyes plays compared to the way Curbs plays, very defensive minded and stuff like that. When Curbs came through the door, how how were you feeling? Um, I was gutted because obviously I was still injured and um, I'd had such a good relationship with Pardew. He was the one that bought me and I wasn't able to help him keep his job effectively. Yeah. Um, so to, to then watch Curbs come in, I think it, it wasn't the same because Curbs had his, had his way and he was very, very diligent when it came to the defensive side and 
the the understanding as players of, of our roles and, and where you have to be when the ball is in a certain area, which is not something that Pardew was. Pardew was more about us attacking. And training reflected that. Training was, for, for a forward anyway, a lot more fun under Pardew than it was under under Kerbishley. And I, I, I struggled under Kerbs because I would I'd then come back from my injury. I don't think he thought I was right because ultimately I... I guess I was right, but I wasn't. You know, I did. I I ran slightly differently, and it looked like I had a bit of a limp. And um, I was I was built differently to when I when I got injured. I bulked a bit more, and and that sort of thing. And I I don't think he was sure about me as that lone striker at times that he played. And so I yeah I struggled to get in um, under under Kirbishly. I did I did at times, of course. Once I got in, I, I did pretty well. Um, but it, I was I was very much in and out under under Kirbishly, uh, which was which was frustrating because I'd worked so hard to get back, and you just then want to play. You don't want to then miss miss games because the manager just hasn't hasn't picked you. Um, and it's amazing how since then I've met him loads of times since, and he's actually a totally different person to who he was as a manager. He's a really top bloke, but as a manager, he was quite quite sort of um, kept himself to himself very um very much looking at, at working day in day out rather than the flamboyant get to know you jack the ladder pardon you yeah do, they, do, 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 do these managers have regular communication with you as, as players in terms of managing the expectations managing the fact that maybe you're not going to play in the next game or is it a case of the day before you're given that message and that's it a bit like what you said there with pardon in the lead up to the final, or or, or did he did, did Cubs manage the expectations for you, Dio? Mm, I don't think he. I don't think managers feel like they have to justify themselves every time they make a decision. That is, that's their right as the manager, and us as players have to be professional enough to to take that. It's different if you walk in to his office and ask questions, which I wasn't. I wasn't willing to do at the time because I was still working my way back in. Um, and ultimately, we were getting results because the players that were playing were, were delivering. And sometimes you've got to bide your, bide your time. Yeah, I don't think managers feel the need to mollycoddle players particularly. Yeah. Um, um, so it, that wasn't the case. I was just I was just inwardly frustrated because I wanted to I wanted to play. And as players, we always think we're the best. So I think I'm better than every other player that that plays in my position. So I feel like I should play every game. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And I think you have to be, don't you? You have to be. At the end of the day, it is, although it is a team sport, you're an individual and it is a career. And particularly for someone like yourselves, obviously, with such a long time out. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, nowadays with, you know, awareness of mental health and stuff like that, you know, if a player had that same situation that you were in, I'm sure there would be safeguards in place and they would keep in you know at tabs was was that was that around when you when you were sort of injured because obviously it must have been horrific you know just not being available being injured all the time seeing the players particularly in that sort of great escape year as well um i mean we had joe cole on and he was saying that joe was saying that when he was 16 being thrusted onto the limelight signing on the pitch because nowadays that wouldn't have happened with uh, assurances about players' well-being and mental health, but back sort of early two thousands, what was it like? What was what sort of support were you given? You know, by the club in terms of your mental well-being as well as your physical well-being. Yeah, I think I think then it was here's something that's available, but it would only be used if you actually asked for it. If asked that for makes it, yeah. sense. Whereas whereas now I think it's part of Certainly, when you when you're coming through as a young player, they work on it. You you will do regular sessions. I would have thought whether that's as a group or individually, mm. and it's looked at a lot more now than it than it was then. I mean, I I took myself away actually for quite a long period. I wasn't getting treatment at the club because ultimately the physios are swamped every day. They're swamped with the current players that need to be fit that Saturday. And they're the most important players, not you, who's out for the next eight months, as harsh as that sounds, but that's the reality. And so I I was down the road at 
at the old physio, John Green. I was working with him individually at times and then um, liaising with the, with the physios day to day um, and doing it that way. And actually, I found that easier because I was away from yeah. having to watch training or watch players go out who were loving life because being a footballer is the best job in the world. And they were, you know, having all the, 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 the chats and, and looking forward to going out training. And that just, that just killed me every day that, so I was, I was quite glad actually, I was able to sort of get out of there for a period of time to help myself just focus on, on getting fit. Yeah. Um, Dean and Russ, I need to head, but listen, oh, yeah. Dean, before I do go, I just want to say, Thank you very much for all the memories that you've given to me as a fan. Thank you for the service to the club and you will always go down um, as, as one of the best players I've ever saw live. So thank you very much for everything. Pleasure, you've done. pleasure. Great you crawler. <laughs> you fucking yeah. crawler. Anyway, go on, piss off. That's it. God, now you can now you don't need subtitles now, Dean. You're right now. Um, right. Uh-huh. So, and, and then obviously, you know, retiring, you know, that must have been such a such a hard decision at such a young age i know you know in, in terms of retirement um obviously you know, you could you could you know for for me i i you know considering football was your life and then to retire it must have been sort of such a devastating blow or you know were you sort of, did you head did you head in the game you sort of knew it was going to happen and it was sort of waiting I for think, the inevitable um, i think it's easy to forget how young you are you know yeah. Footballers are young anyway. It's a, it's a young, it's a young job in terms of how young you have it for. And you, if you retire, if you do well and retire, you know, thirty-two, you're still very, very young. Mm. So you know, I was 24, 24 going into twenty-five, and I couldn't get up out of bed and go downstairs straight away. It would take mm. me twenty minutes to get the ankle into a position where I could get down the stairs and um, and start my day. I couldn't go to the supermarket and do the full shop. I'd have to stop halfway through and go and sit by the tills and wait for them to finish. Uh, it, you know, those sort of things you think, I'm 25. That, yeah. that shouldn't be happening for a 25-year-old. So if I can't do this, how am I ever going to be an elite athlete? Now I did everything I could. I had multiple operations. I tried all the newest medical procedures you could have to try and to try and get fit. Um, and ultimately, when you're in that state, I was. But I, 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 I would never wanted to say it myself. I never wanted to say I'm done because so, mm. how how do you say that to yourself yeah. when it's when it's everything you've ever dreamed of and you don't know what else to do. Um, so the, the surgeon in Holland, he was the one that was pretty blunt for the first time and said, you know, if you want any sort of a life where you can walk, um, and I had young kids, yeah. then you, then you need to stop. And so it almost came as a bit of a relief to think, oh, thanks, because I don't know whether I can keep doing this. You yeah, know, I, yeah. I don't know whether I can keep having operations and, and not being able to wake up and just kind of get out of bed. So yeah it, i was at a point where i i i needed to retire and i had to but I don't, I don't know how i got over i don't know how i dealt with it if i'm honest because how are you meant to deal with that yeah. it's your lifelong dream it's the the one thing that you're great at it's the thing you love most to do i guess the only way i can try and relate it to anyone is if you think about the one thing you love to do the most in your life um tomorrow you can never do it again that, that's the only so if yeah. one thing you look wow. the one thing you love to do is go and watch west ham mm. tomorrow you can never do it again that's, i guess that's the only way of, of trying to maybe understand what it's like but i know a lot of players have struggled mentally with with having to finish um but i i've got an unbelievable sense of reality so football is a fantasy to me, it's not a real world. Um, football's a fantasy world. It's not. It's not real to yeah. score goals, to run to a, a stand full of twenty thousand people that are going absolutely mad because you're the one that's put the ball in the net. That's not real. Go when you go anywhere. The way people treat you, 
is not normal. That's right. that's a fan. That's a fantasy because you are just effectively a normal person. But what you do as a job makes people treat you differently, which is great, but it's not real. Mm. Well, the trappings of being a footballer, the money, the fame. You know, you don't have to want for anything. If you want to go anywhere, it's doors just open. But it's just not real. It's it's all mm. a massive, big fantasy world, and it, it's amazing world to be in. But I've always kept that that uh, mindset of no. I, but what's real is your family, your health, yeah. you know, your kids doing the simple things, whether it's going for a pint with your mate, whether it's having a round of golf, whether it's uh, you, you still got to do all the normal things that, that everybody else has to do. So yeah. I've always kept that. And I'm very, very lucky. That, that's the other thing. I've got mates mm. that wanted to make it and never got to, never got to experience the things I got to experience. So, trying to keep all of that mindset is probably the one thing that kind of kept me sane and got got me through. But it took a while. I mean, three years at least before I even mm. came out of sort of some sort of hibernation. I think. Phenomenal. Yeah, fantastic answer, Dean. That took me to be back. Um, but then, obviously, you know, let's talk about the Martin Noble testimonial because that—that to me was, was sort of like not 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 you coming home, but it felt a bit like that. It felt like Dean, you know, back on the back on Upton Park, you know, for that 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 fantastic day, and obviously you scored, you know, a replica of the goal against Man United. But what was that like to put put the short put the boots on, walk out at Upton Park one more time as a player rather than as a spectator? Um, well, I'll, 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 I'll be honest in terms of, I was at Centre Parks the night before and I'd, <laughs> we'd have a good, we'd, I one? think somewhere, somewhere in Nottingham, I think it is. Um, so I'd had a good night with mates and stuff like that. And I'd been, I'd hurt my back on that blooming tree climb <laughs> thing that you have to do with your kids. And, you know, I'm like, what four stone heavier than I was when I was playing, and and I said to the missus at night, I just said, I could do without this. To be honest, I said, you know, my back's really sore. You know, if I had a drink, I'm gonna put that shirt on. It'd be like a sausage skin on me. It'll just be horrible. These new shirts. Oh. Um, I said I'll be on the bench. You know, I'll go all the way down there. I'll be sat on the bench because you know Decanio and Teddy Sheringham and Bellamy. They'll all they'll be playing sort of thing. She went, nah, come on. It's, it's, it, you know, the whole day is for Mark is, is for nodes. And, and I, I said, you're right. Sorry. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah of course we'll, we'll go down. And she said, the, you know, me and the kids are coming. Um, so yeah, we got up, we headed down. It was just, it was just brilliant. I didn't expect it to be the, the day that it was in terms of the whole stadium, completely full, that sort of atmosphere getting to see all the, the the old players again, some of the new. But I was on the bench, obviously. Um, and then when I came on, um, I remember the first thing, the ball came across and I'm about four yards out and I just fell over, hit me in the stomach and, and went into the keeper's hands. And I thought, uh -oh, I thought that's man. that's why that's why I didn't want to turn up because I can't <laughs> move and this is on this is actually being shown on telly, you know, this sort yeah. of thing. But then ball went down the right to Teddy. He pulled it back to Bish. Um, and then when it came across, it was like a flinch. You know, there's no reason I should be doing that when I was, you know, when I had to retire and I'm three stone overweight. But it's just an instinct to do it. And honestly, the noise that came oh, from that goal was something I'd never experienced before, in, even as a pro. The noise was unbelievable. And the reaction of the players and... And that sort of thing. And, and obviously my kids never got to see me play. No. So they, they don't realise that I was half decent, you know. <laughs> so for them to experience the whole crowd singing, you know, their dad's name yeah. was, was, was great to have that moment. But also then as a, I didn't, like you say, I didn't really get to say goodbye to the supporters when I finished. Mm. It just ended and that was it. And I disappeared. So to be able to have that, that kind of moment where it was a, Thanks for everything to the supporters, but also don't forget, you know, I was I was all right once in a still had it in the while. locker. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. so it, it turned out to be an amazing day for for Nobes and and obviously for me personally, and and it's something that 
that's, that's most support supporters want to hear about that. And I'm like, I, I did actually have a proper career. <laughs> Got that shirt behind your fuck's sake. You know what I mean? <laughs> Love it, love it. Right, let's go for a few questions. Then we do your hammers level, and then we're then we're then we'll finish. So, um, these are from our, our subscribers. Um, let's go with the uh, hardest defender you you were up against. Um, it, it's definitely Rio. I know I did score mm. against him, but I just found being the, the size that I was and physically, I like to try and get hold of defenders and 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 manipulate the situation in that way. And Rio just wasn't like that, even though he's a big. He's a big player. Mm. He he's more intelligent in terms of the way he positions himself. So I put my arm back to try and get hold of him, and he wasn't there very often. He was a yard off, and then he'd just nip in when the ball came and made you look, made you feel, made you feel a bit stupid. And then he just he he had that extra, you know, he, he ran in such a a relaxed way, but actually he was rapid when he wanted to be. So. I just found it frustrating a lot of the time playing um, against Rio more so than I think anyone else. Yeah. Did you like as a forward? As a forward, were you, do you? Pref- did you? I mean, we've had lots of obviously ex players on the channel, and and some were, were more like they they liked they liked a bit of rough and tumble. They liked a bit of a ruck with the with the centre half. You know, I'm thinking some of the older strikers like David Cross. He loved a good old tussle with a centre half. Is that is that? Did you like it when it was like a bit more I... physical? I I think I I grew into that side of it. Yeah. I don't think that is that is naturally me personally, but I grew into realizing how important actually that was. Um, mm. You know, players like John Terry, you know, you're just going to yeah. basically have a tear up physically, <laughs> which was which was great. But you, I'd get an elbow and you give out an, an elbow type of thing. Yeah. It was, but the, the game was different. It, even yeah. in my era, you there was still quite a lot of physicality. Mm. You know, goalkeepers used to take goal kicks. And you used to go <laughs> yeah. go up for head go up for headers from that regularly. So there was a lot of that side of it um, that I did learn to use my sort of size and physicality yeah. to my advantage towards the end. But it it was not like Crossy's era. I know that. No, no, for sure. no exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, goalkeepers did take goal kicks rather than these stupid fucking side passes. And if it, oh, winds me. Yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winds me up. We all think we've got Edison in goal. Um, Ruby Tuesday, one of one of my favourite all time players from Ruby Tuesday, both at Norwich and West Ham. Um, what do you uh, what's what do you think of the changes that have been brought about since retirement? VAR, come on, that, everyone's got to ask about it. VAR, what are your thoughts about VAR, Dino? Um, it's it's a killer for the game in terms of taking, I think the the joy out of it certainly for. From a forwards perspective, I think I'd have had goals chalked off because I wasn't the quickest. I relied probably on stealing a couple of yards yeah. from, from defenders. Um, you know, I can't imagine now being a player scoring a goal and thinking, I'm not sure if I can celebrate because yeah. I think maybe I was offside. So they're not not celebrating. I oh I just and the and the supporters as well to to have the high of, of of a goal going in and then it being taken away and the uncertainty of when you're in the stadium, not having a clue what it's for. Yeah. I think there's a long way for that to go for it to be enjoyable. Um, so I'm pretty glad I wasn't, I wasn't part of this era. <laughs> yeah. I think the I think women, I think it seems like the WSL at the moment, the women's league is, is, is getting the issue as well, where it comes to a tipping point where I think VAR will, coming into play there soon because we had a goal chalked off yeah. the other day for yeah, yeah. Down, which should have been um what we got here uh mark um well i think we've answered your question already how do you think you'd fit in the current team the current impacts of current start you wouldn't like it would you <laughs> in all honesty I'm, yeah, I'm David I'm, boys. I, I, I genuinely think i'd have struggled um in this era because of playing a lone lone striker role mm. i mean i think i could have been more of a cane than I would yeah. be um, an Antonio, of course, because that's more of the way I'd, I'd, I'd have played. Um, but it, it would have depended on what the manager wanted. If the, one, if the manager wanted somebody that could run the channels and come short and get in the box physically, I was pretty pathetic. <laughs> so so um, I might have struggled. But if it was more technical side, then I think I might have been okay. Definitely, definitely. Uh, from Surreal, um, what if you was in charge of the Amers, um, uh, how would you change? Would you change, change tactics? Of course, I think you probably would change tactics, wouldn't you, to be honest, if you are in charge all of the Amers I, now? 
yeah, all I think is in that 10, 20 minute period that we have, we are capable of being higher up the pitch and work rate isn't an issue with the mm. players because they're probably one of the fittest teams in the league, I, I would always say, because yep. out of possession, they have to do so much work. Mm. Why can't that out of possession be higher up the pitch? So uh, yep. that's what I would like to see is just them be up, higher up the pitch doing that work but I guess if you were to do that, you'd have to make sure you had the pace, I guess, at the back for if teams counter counter attack against you. But that's that's the main thing for me. Is I think the the team are capable of it. It's just I want to see it higher up the pitch. Agreed. And what I love about you, Dean, is you always say we. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And it, and, and it, it's lovely to see. Yeah, we do this. We do that. Um, from Danny. Um, who would you prefer, Luke, play with Lucas Paqueta or Yoshi Ben Ayoun? Oh, that's Ooh. harsh. Danny, that what are you doing harsh. to poor Dean? Um, who would provide? Who provide? I'd have to say, I'd have to say Yossi. I mean, Yossi yeah. was. Un, I think pro, I don't know whether he is underappreciated by West Ham fans, but what a player he was! Yeah. By the way, um, I think. He was physically weak, though. That's the only issue Yossi had. Yeah. He, was, he wasn't weak mentally. He wanted to get and get stuck in, but he was Harry, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he was heard, so yeah. sort of scrawny that he just, <laughs> you know, he'd get, he'd get bullied. Quite. Whereas Pakitar is different. He can yeah. stick his arse in, get hold of it, manipulate the ball. Um, but I wouldn't go against Yossi. Nah. Yossi, was the, Yossi La- was the man. Last question from, Je- from Jan. Best game. Best game playing for West Ham? What's your best game? I would probably say... I would probably say Man City away, I think, yeah. as a as an all-round performance. I think I had moments in other games where I was, where I was very good, but um, Manchester Manchester City away was, was probably the most complete performance I'd had in a West Ham shirt in terms of leading the line, the goals I scored... Um, in a in such a big game as well, importance wise. So yeah, I think Man City away. Yeah, sounds great. I'd, I'd agree. I would agree. Right. Okay. So everyone we had on the channel, apart from uh, Harry, Bish, and Nigel Rea Coca, randomly, every person we've had on the channel has given their hammers eleven. So the idea is you put an eleven together of the players you played with during your time at West Ham, um, and you could pick whoever you want. You know, people you enjoy playing with, people you thought were best in that position. You could put yourself in to get your appearances back up. It's no problem <laughs> at all. We've had that as well. Um, try and play four four two because I think that's you know, I think that's where you were best in the four four two. So, in in terms of in goal, who would be in goal for the Ashton eleven? I think I'd go with Rob Green. Yeah, I think um, overall. You know, Greedy is uh, was a top goalkeeper. That's why he represented. I represented England. Yeah, and I think consistently again, somebody that you you felt like in the big moments, he'd come up with a a top save. Um, a bit of a, a bit of an oddball, Greeny. He'd admit yes. that. Yes, that's yeah. what many once, many of once, said. Once seen in a nightclub with a with an anorak on over his head, was was kind of <laughs> sub, sub, about summed him up. <laughs> Apparently, he used to sit at the front reading the Financial Times. That yes, was the, that correct. That was the, yeah, that was the standard on, Rob Green pose. On his, on his, sat on his own. Yeah, sat on his own. Bless him. All right, we'll put Greeno in. Uh, let's go. Let's go left back. Who would be left back in Dino's living? Conch. Conch would be. Yeah. You know, went on to have a great career, and um, I think had a bit of everything. So had that defensive work. Was super aggressive, but get forward genuine quality like really great delivery from a from a, a forwards perspective i think i felt like i could rely on his delivery to mm. to come into the box um other than when he missed me out and put it in the top bin in the cup final <laughs> um, well yeah it, it was a goal apparently he he, he meant it no he didn't no he didn't he told yeah, me didn't. i know he's full of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah good old conch um i right, put him on the left let's go let's go right back who would be right back Lucas Neal, um, yeah, yeah. terrific player, great captain, probably my favourite captain, I would say, at the, at the club. Um, fantastic 
um, social secretary as well. Superb. <laughs> um, and again, delivery. I think back to the Everton away game where yes. from deep he played that cross in for me to go and attack and, and score. Um, and just an all round pretty top bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, during and, and also, whole... and, and also, sorry, and also was one of the big captains that would genuinely question the manager in front of everyone yes. and have that debate that was imp- that I think is important at that sort of level. He yeah. wasn't afraid to stir that up. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think that's what you need as a captain. I think, I think to be honest, the team now is missing that person. Yeah, I think we've had we've had some good captains. Re- you know, we've had Nobes for so long. Yeah. Deck, who I thought was a good t- club uh, team captain, and I just don't think I don't get that with Zuma. No. I don't get that he's going to just pull up, pull up uh, mm. Moisey on his team selection. You know, that's something no. like that. Just, just don't get it, unfortunately. Um, right, centre half, first centre half, then. Um, and Tom, yeah, um, I think to have to kind of live in the shadow of his brother. I, I can't imagine what that must be like. Not only that, we all took the piss out of that fact every single day. Yes. Yeah. Um, so for him to still be the player that he was and very underrated as well, because people were comparing him to Rio. Yeah. Um, I actually played England youth with him under 21s and then at West Ham. Again, so many of the attributes I think you need as centre back which is, you know, organisation, pace, great in the air, good on the ball. Um, I thought I thought he was very good, Anton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it, was it, his nickname, was it Tooth? It was like, it was always like, I can't remember, it was like Tufa or Threefa. It was always like whatever Rio did three weeks later, Anton did or something like that. It's like yeah. his hair and stuff. Poor Anton, <laughs> bless him. Um, who's going to partner? Who's going to partner midfield in their centre-backs? Probably one of the best defenders I've ever seen in the flesh, which is Gabidon. Yes. Um, again, you know, struggled with a back, back problem all his career. But man, what a defender. Mm. Honestly, stronger than stronger than he looked. Yeah. Very much quicker than he looked. He was rapid, by the way. Such a nice bloke, <laughs> considering, you know, what he was like as a, as a defender, some of the tackles he'd put in, etc., um, I watched him against Henri once, and Henri mm. struggled. He, yeah. you know, you, you see Henri burst past players. Gab's just unbeatable against mm. Henri, and I was like, "Wow, you know what a what a player!" And again, if it wasn't for the the back problem that he that he continued to have throughout his career, um, I think he's absolutely elite level centre back. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. One of those players, I think you don't is you know. Not forgotten about, but you know, there's there's other pl- like someone like yeah, you know, I love Ging and and Ginge and yeah, Ging Gabs was, was a, yeah, Gabs was a phenomenal gone. player. Yeah, but that's the thing, Ginge Ginge rarely played when I was there because yeah, of those did, two. Yeah. yeah, that was the thing. He was, he, I mean, it was they were bought at the same time, weren't they, from Cardiff as well as a pair. Yeah. Um, right, let's go. Let's go left wing. Who'll be on the left? Mike Everington. Nice for me, was um, yeah. was terrific. Old style winger. None of this, you know, uh, Ben Rama checkbacks. None oh. of those. Just, just, just genuine tricky Proper. winger gets it, gets it on his left, whips it behind the defence. You know when you can run. Um, could drift inside. Actually, he was decent on his right foot. It's not like he was all all left foot. Um, discipline defensively as well. Mm. Great engine to get up and down. Not a lot not to like about. About Matty Everington, to be yeah. honest, other than his other than his his poor choice of betting, then he was. <laughs> other than that, he was class. Yeah, and it's, football can be such an easy game sometimes, can't it? If you put like a a yeah. good left winger on the left wing, a good right wing on the right wing, someone like you up front, it's it's not it's not tricky, and just getting those balls into you, knocking them in, job done. Simple, simple. Um, who will go on the right then? It'd be Yossi. Yossi yeah. was a special, special talent. And I think having come through the first time I'd been in that type of environment at the top level, hadn't seen players like Yossi probably throughout mm. my career. Different type of player. So creative, so inventive. 
um, super confident, you know, used to tell the players, you know, that there isn't enough good English players. So that's why I'm having to come over here and teach you. <laughs> <laughs> and that sort of attitude. But again, I, love it. I know that he could, he could chop left and right and chop mm. um, a little bit, which could, which could be frustrating. Um, but then he could come up with something pretty magical. And you've got to have that in your team. Yeah. And he's a boomerang player. Player who goes and comes back. I, I love a boomerang player when he came back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, central midfield. Some good players you played with central midfield. Who's your first one? Uh, Scott Parker. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought I thought Scott was so impressive. Um, great captain. Great leader. Would Would regularly take the team talks away from curbs, even if he, mm. even if he didn't want him to, he'd do it anyway. Cause he was so passionate. Um, and I've never seen anyone swivel on a ball as much as Scotty Parker can. And, and again, you know, you watched him at Charlton and at, at Chelsea, um, knew he was a good player, but then when you play with these players, you think, yeah, I can see why like a uh, technically very, very good. Um, and drove the team certainly when he was when he was part of it. Yeah, totally agree. I used to see him like crawl, literally crawl out of the players' car park sometimes because he'd been yeah. sp- so much in. He was an absolute um, absolute beast of a of a man with that scar, that old big bum as well. He put that big bum, do the Parker Swivel. Yeah. Parker Swivel, bless him. Um, who's he going to partner in the midfield? Nice, Rio Coca. Nice. Um, I again, I think he is a player that's that's underrated. And now I actually think in this era, when you're looking for a player that's got the engine that the engine that he has, the ability to win the ball back, the ability to burst through midfield and take two or three players out of out of the game. Again, if you look if you think of Man City away, they look like they're on a counter attack. He makes an unbelievable tackle. Mm. Then jinx past two players, gives it to Yossi, and then Yossi to me. That was him. That was that was yeah. him that did that that side of the game. Um, unbelievably young to be a captain. Yeah, yes, was one of the best was one of the best I played under captaincy wise. And again, a player that maybe didn't get the the plaudits he, he deserved for the work that he did. Whereas now, you know, now players are being bought for a hundred million that that are doing the things. It's that a great show. Nige, yeah. That Nigel was doing. Yeah, you know, he he could do everything that Kai Sado could do. He could. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Totally agree. And I think a lot of these players are. Yeah. I mean, there's someone like yeah, someone like Yoshi in in today's game as well, where it's more technical. You know, where he wasn't. Boy, he was maybe sort of physically dominated sometimes. You know, in today's game, he would have been a superstar, absolute superstar. Um, yeah. Right up front, who are you going with? Um, Marlon Harewood to start with. Um, uh, I, I watched him a lot when he was at Forest um, because, you know, we were in the same leagues for, for a period yeah. of time. And he, what the centre-backs used to say playing against him, for us, used to dread playing against him because of, you know, those, he had unbelievable power in the right foot. So if you gave him a yard, he could just smash it in. Um, intelligent run maker. But then had the power and the pace to to hurt teams. Mm. Very, very unselfish. Very, as in different to a lot of forwards, in, me included, who is very much about me and what yeah. what's best what's best for me. I want to score. I, you know that I, I, I'm like that, and I think a lot of forwards. He wasn't as much about that. I think he was more unselfish than many strikers I've ever played with. Um, and scored scored big goals. You know, semi final yeah. goal was was gigantic for the club. Yeah, we used to. Where, where I was when I was doing the, the the music. I was so at the old ground. I was obviously under the the scoreboard, and we used to call that little corner there between the uh, Bobby Moore and wherever whether gambling company had, had purchased the rights to the West End that month. Um, I used to call it Harewood Corner because you always used to jog the, jog the ball into the corner and then do a little trick and then run along the byline line literally <laughs> every time, every time. And obviously your your era was sort of part of the patch era, I used to call them, where they used to, which we, a, a betting company would go under or, or a, you know, a holiday company would go under and they'd have to put a patch on and stick a new... <laughs> 
<laughs> logo on. Oh, it's shocking that time. Anyway, who's who's he going to complete? Is is Dino going to get another appearance? No, 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 no. I'm long retired. No, te- <laughs> Teddy, Teddy for me. Yeah, uh, absolute god. You know, like to be able to learn from him when I got there. Uh, you know, a player that didn't rely on pace, a bit like myself, but watching him in training, 39 years old, Mental. still owning it, you know, always had space, clinical finisher, you know, again, the, some of the finishes were just like, just awesome. I just, I loved every uh, so much about Teddy's game. Obviously, I grew up watching him, mm. you know, Euro 96 and playing yeah. for Man United, etc. He was um, in Tottenham. What a player, um, and what what a guy to sort of like like Pard said, be a mentor and, and learn from. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, yeah, he was terrific. That's the team. That ain't a bad team, Dino. That is not a bad team. And obviously, you'll be on the bench, obviously, uh, to come on or, <laughs> yeah. or play a manager. Play a manager. Why not? Um, yeah, brilliant team, man. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Absolute pleasure. Uh, and as I said, as we said at the beginning, if you are. If you are in the Dagenham region, don't forget Dino is pulling the boots on, possibly for the fifth time, uh, he thinks, since um, since he's retired. Um, a great, great event for uh, Dylan to be this. Like, ten years, mental, ten years he passed. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Um, but, yeah, so that'd be a great game. And uh, Jimmy is uh, putting together quite a side, quite a side for the West Ham legends. Um, obviously, Dino, you'll be covering the Newcastle game on Saturday, so you better start walking um, to, get, to get up to the top for that gantry position. Um, but, yeah. mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, man. No, thanks for having me along. It's been great to sort of reminisce and, and talk talk everything West Ham. It's um, it's a special place in my heart, the club, because everyone's been so great since I retired. So um, it's always a pleasure. Brilliant. Thank you. And thank you to everyone watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And for me and for Mr. Dean Ashton, Take care, stay safe, stay warm. Come on, you irons. See you soon. Bye-bye.